tell me a little bit about playing with Chicago. You've been in there for a while. How did you first get the gig? And this is like a dream come true, playing with Chicago for you? Well, yeah, I was a Chicago fan since I was, I told Robert Lamb, I used to cut uh, the lawns of uh, different neighbors when I was a kid. And when I got paid those $10, I, Chicago Transit Authority and this Riley Gears of Cream was my first two albums that I bought with my own money. So I'm very proud. Those are my first records that I bought Amazing. myself. Amazing. And so, yeah, we go way back. And I, I got the gig originally. It's a crazy story, like all music business story. I was with Lindsey Buckingham from 2007 to 2011. And in the middle of tour of 2011, we had an unfortunate situation where our lead guitar player had a problem with his back mm -hmm. and the tour couldn't continue. And Lindsay decided to cancel the tour and go solo. And so basically I found myself without a tour in the middle of Christmas. Wow. Yeah. And so I, uh, my brother, Danny, was working with Zach Brown Band and then he, he was playing percussion with Chicago. And so I went to sub him on percussion, and and then he was made a member of Zach Town at the same time. So they asked me to stay on percussion, so I did for six years. Wow. And I played with Chicago from 2012, and then in, it was a change, uh, Chris and and the ba the bassist that we had at that time resigned, and that's a deeper, longer story. But they asked me because they knew that I played drums also. And I, by that time, I knew the show inside out. And so, but you know, it was still an adjustment. Sure. And I basically hopped in on the, on the drum chair at the beginning of 2018. It's incredible. Yeah. For, for here the, I am. Here you are, amazing. For those who haven't seen, I wanna play uh, a little bit of a video. This is you uh, from your camera drumming for Chicago. This is, uh, well, we'll let folks see if they can tell what song this is. It sounds like I'm a man. It is. Can you see that, Wally? Uh, no, I can't. Okay. But I hear it. <laughs> okay. You are just shredding on the, on the drums. It is definitely I'm a man. Now, who's playing percussion besides, uh, in addition to you, next to you? Okay, Ray Islas, uh, he played percussion with a lot of different people in the LA area, and we worked together. And so when my brother Danny, in, at the beginning of 2018, when I went to drums, Danny was off from Zach Brown Band, so he played the, the first month in Las Vegas. We had a residency. And then he went on tour with Zach Brown Band, and then we had to get a percussion. And so we got Ray Islas, which has played with Marcus Miller and, you know, uh, so many people. Yeah. You can go to Islas with a Y, Islas.com. And so we, uh, we've we been having a lot of fun. And I'm a man. It's a really crazy tune for me because I worked with, with Steve Winwood for 10 years. Right. Yeah. So I played I'm a man with Steve Winwood. And then I played percussion with Chicago, and then I played I'm a Man. It's a different version. Yeah, I was wondering, what are the similarities and differences when you're playing with those two bands of that yeah, song? Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to explain, but, you know, Steve is a, uh, you, you know, Steve is a, a more a, a, a steady groove on the drums. Okay. And uh, at the first time I heard I'm a man, though, it was Chicago's version. Uh, okay, yeah. And I loved it. And yeah. I said, oh, my God, I love that tune. And then I, I realized it was Steve Winwood tune. Then I went back. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I play like all the versions you can imagine. Traffic version, uh, Steve Winwood version, and Chicago's version. And then we, we now, as the band changes, like it's normal, as the band changes, we create our own little version yeah. Yeah. of this band. Sure. No. How many members in Chicago right now? Because I know it's evolved and changed. 
Yeah, we have a, a lead singer, so that makes it 10, 10 musicians. Wow. So we have a, a new lead singer, Neil, uh, and, and, uh, and a new bassist, and a new percussionist, and me on drums. Uh, the original guys, Robert Lamb, Lee Lockney, and Jimmy Pankow are the ones who are playing that are the original, basically the leaders. Amazing. Yeah. And then with our manager, so basically those are, you, you might say, the leaders in, in, the, in, the, in the music part of Chicago. Where, you know, when I used to work with Steve Winwood, there's only one leader. Or Santana, there's only one right. leader. So you, right. or Lindsey Buckingham, so you take. So with Chicago, there's three different inputs. Yeah. Yeah, so a little more democratic, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but it's a lot of fun, and the way it, it works is really interesting because uh, we hardly sound check or rehearse. No. It's basically just see you at the downbeat, learn the music well, and, and we'll go for it. Yeah. So that, that was a question I wanted to ask you because these are pretty iconic. I mean, they're iconic songs with Chicago, but, you know, the original drummer, Danny Seraphine, these are some in, in, incredible iconic drum parts as well. So yeah. when you're playing this, are you looking for the spirit of some of those songs? Or are you going note for note? What's your intention around that? Well, you know, this is a very interesting question. I just saw Danny at NAM, hmm. uh, and I mean, I, I've, just, just since I'm in a drum interview, hopefully for a lot of drummers, let me take this opportunity. Like I said before, uh, drummers are very special people. My dad, I grew up with a drummer, which is my dad, and we we were very connected. And I I have to say more than other instrumentalists, we kind of appreciate what drummers do and the hard job that we do and what what it takes. So. I mean, Tris and Bowden and Danny Serafin and I are friends, and we are brothers. And the same thing happened with Santana. Before I went on with Santana, I spoke to everybody before Santana. And after Santana, I spoke and be, remained friends, everybody after me. Dennis Chambers, I mean, you name it, El Negro, Horacio Hernandez. Michael So, Shee. you know, we are very connected. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, and so Danny... I, I told Danny, man, when I sit in the Chicago drum stool, uh, he's in my heart because those parts were written by Danny. Right. And I brought, because I'm a fan of a lot of the albums, I actually brought a couple of fills that were exactly what Danny played, you know, that we actually uh, had left and actually changed a little bit but you know i actually all, all i can do is do what i think i need to do and if the guys don't like it and they tell me to change then then that's it yeah. remember right now there's three leaders right and if they tell me play it like this don't play it like that then that's what i have to do right i, I don't imagine you're getting a lot of that feedback of we don't like it change it up right <laughs> right. And even for, from the public, hey, are you going to play just like Danny? He goes, well, uh, a lot of times some of the guys that are the originals tell me, no, nah, you don't 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 play it like that. Play it like simpler or play it like more of a, a steady groove. Uh, but but Danny was so amazing. And some of the things he, he had this uh, swing jazzy feel yeah. and the horns with the horns and they were playing straight eighth, 16 notes, and then the horns play something like and you're playing rock, you know, right. so right. that's that's why Chicago is so iconic because when you really realize it's basically like straight eighth note, 16 note rock with jazz bebop kind of fills right. on the horns. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I love and, it. And, and, and Danny just did that really well. And then, of course, Tris came after, and, and he funked it out. And it was uh, the mixture is just fantastic. Yeah. 